So let's look at these two examples here. So it says, for each motion diagram, write a short expression of them, a description of the motion of an object that will match the diagram. So I'm trying to get you here to start to think about this as a story. Why do I want to think this as a story here? Because you're going to be solving problems that are word problems. Word problems are little stories. And your job here is to get information of these stories. So let's get going. So I'm going to look at the first one here. And this is the first one that we want to look at. So one of the things that I could imagine here is that a good description of this here. So if I describe this motion, I could say that I'm driving in my car and see a stop sign up ahead. So what do I do? I now start pushing on the brakes. And I'm going to push on the brakes in such a way that I slow down at a constant rate. Right? So then I, um, I apply the brakes and slow down at a constant rate. So here we go. So now I'm gonna look at that dot and note that I'm doing the uh, one that we've already did here of slowing down, but it's because I think this is a tricky one. Okay, so here we go again. So when I look at this thing, again, one cannot draw a vector at point zero. And the question is why? We have no information about the previous distant interval. We need, we need that, th those distances here. So here we go. So let's say that this is my zero point right here. So then I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna say this is one here. So what do I know? Well, I now look at this guy and I'm going to say, okay, here's my interval. And this is one, two, three, four, five, right here. So then I'm going to draw some vector. And in this vector here, let's say that I draw this vector and it goes out to four squares. So then clearly, this is my distance. And this is my vector at one, right? I need that interval. So then I continue to bring it down. And now, because the dots are getting closer together, we know that it's slowing down. So if that was five squares, you know what? I'm going to change what I just did here. I'm going to come in. And I am going to make this four instead. It's going to be easier for our numbers here. Okay, so I'm going to do a four here. So I'm going to make this my zero point here. So then if I go to two here, then I keep following the same practice. That interval is going to be smaller. And therefore, my vector has to be smaller than the previous one. And if I keep doing this, 
You could see that that was three, so this has to be two. So this guy is even smaller here. So now this guy is two. And if that was two, this has to be one. So if this has to be one, that's my interval right there. So then this guy is only one square. And then I get to here, this is four, and then this guy goes to five. So what this says here at this five here, it says that it stops right there. Because it stops, there is no velocity vector at point five. So you could see here, even though I stopped drawing them, my velocity vectors are getting smaller and they're getting smaller. And at point five, you could see here that V5 is equal to zero. Let's look at the next one here. So if I look at this picture here, In this example here, again, I want to tell a story here. So I could imagine that I'm riding my bike. Okay. So I'm riding my bike, heading north. Right. I'm heading, heading north. At some point, I make a left hand turn going west. So, what do I see here? What I see here is that there are two intervals here. The first interval that I see is that note that right from here to here, this here in this part of the interval, I am changing velocity. And then from here to here, you can clearly see that I have constant velocity in this situation. So there's two pieces to this thing here. So if I now start to look at my arrows here, I can then say that here, my arrows are changing directions while moving at constant speed here. So in this region right here, I have constant speed and I have a change in direction. That's what I mean by changing velocity. Now, in this region here, you see here that all my velocity vectors are pointing in the same direction here and they're moving in the west. So I have constant speed and constant direction. So now I wanna to get to a more complicated motion diagram because these were just sort of like uh, warm-ups, if I could say this, but this is the one I really want to pay attention to right here. Okay, so this is a more 
complicated motion diagram. Now, why is this one more complicated? The reason why it's more complicated is that as you look at this example that I'm just putting out here, there's a lot of missing details. So that means you have to fill in the details. Otherwise, it doesn't make any sense. Okay, so let's read this together and let's break this up into intervals. So it says here, a jogger running east at a steady pace. All we know is that it's a steady pace. Suddenly develops a cramp. He is lucky. A westbound bus is sitting at a bus stop just ahead. He gets on the bus and enjoys a quick ride home. Use a motion diagram to describe the entire motion of the jogger here. So he says that the jogger is running east at a steady pace. Now we know that the jogger must have started at home, but home is not the same place where the jogger is at right now. So what I'm gonna do here is that I could imagine that I'm gonna say that for the sake of argument, I'm gonna say that this here is home of the jogger, but the jogger is somewhere, not at home, but somewhere you know, farther from home because he's now moving at a constant steady piece, uh, pace here. So I'm gonna say here, so the first interval that I would say here is that the jogger is running east at a steady pace. So let's look at this thing here. So if it's running at a steady pace, let's say that this is two squares. Okay, so I'm going to set my interval up here. And then right here, this is where he develops a leg cramp. So what I need you to do is that I need you to pay attention to these intervals to make sure you get them right. And when we start solving these mathematically, it becomes super important that you get the right picture. So here we go. Let's look at the interval. I have a speed here, right? So that means here that this speed is going like this. This speed is going like this. Look at my intervals. Here's my interval now. Now, Here's my question. This is zero, one, two, three. Is the speed at point three the same, longer, or shorter than the speed at point two? What would be your guess? You don't guess. Look at the interval. The speed at three depends on the interval between two and three. Since the interval between one and two is the same between two and three, then the speed right here has to be the same. So these speeds are all the same here. Now he develops a leg cramp. So if he develops a leg cramp, and it says here that, that he stops at a bus stop that's right there, that means he has to do what? He has to slow down. So what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to change this to a different color because this is a different interval. Now he slows down. So what do I do? I start breaking these guys down. So then I go to three to four. And if I look at that interval, that interval is smaller. So therefore, that speed is slower. And then if I continue to bring it right here, then this is four and this is five. 
you could see here is that that interval is even smaller here. So what am I going to say? I'm going to say that V5 right here is zero. So in other words, this right here, this location right here is the bus stop. So you can see here is that this represents what? Constant velocity interval. And then this interval right here, this here is your changing velocity. Because you are slowing down. And this becomes really important in problem solving. Now, what happens? He gets on the bus. So how does he get on the bus? Well, the first thing that we got to pay attention to is that we know that even though we did not set our coordinate system, I should have, we know that that's the east direction. That is the west direction. So he's moving east. But now what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to, to change images here, I'm going to say that this is five. This is where the speed is zero. So now what is he going to do here? He's going to get onto the bus, right? Right here, he boards the bus right there. So what do we know about the bus? Is the bus moving? No, the bus is stationary. So what does he have to do? He gets on the bus and now the bus, is it gonna move slower or is it gonna move faster than the runner? Of course, it's gonna have to move faster, but the bus has to speed up. So here I go. Then I start looking at my dots. And then I have to constantly speed up here. So here's what I'm gonna do here. So I start to look at my intervals again. So if I look at my intervals, what am I seeing here? I look at this interval and I see here that this arrow is like this. And then I look at this arrow and that arrow now has to be longer. And then the bus has to move faster then the runner here, so I'm going to go all the way out to here. So now you can see here is that this interval is longer than the intervals of here. So then what's going to happen? I'm going to have an even longer. So I'm seeing my speed get faster and faster. And this is the bus that's going back. Now, because it's a short drive, What's going to happen here, so let me keep putting in my thing. He has to stop at his home queue. So now what I'm going to say here is that if I look at my interval from here to here, you can see that this interval is then going to be, again, it's going to be changing velocity. which means that it's speeding up. So now what I'm gonna say here is that the bus is gonna slow down. So it's gotta slow down to his home. So I'm gonna change the location of the home, but the bus now starts to apply the brakes. So then I'm gonna go, here's eight, and I'm gonna go to here to nine. So then my arrow here, if I change, let me see if I can change my colors here, just because it's a different interval. I'm going to say that this guy was here. So now if I look at my interval, you could see that my interval is now smaller. So that means here that my velocity is slowing down. And then I continue to slow down. And my velocity slows down. And then eventually, 
it's going to stop right here. And this right here is what I'm going to call home. That's where he gets off. So if I look at my interval from here to here, you can then see that this means, again, changing velocity, which then means slowing down. So if I look at this thing, you could see that my intervals are getting smaller. And then right here, so if I put in my numbers, this is 9, this is 10, this is 10, this is 11. At V equal 11, that's 0. That's the motion diagram for this example.